I'm sitting on the third row, and I can't help but <laughs> I can't help but you know tell the person next to me. I said, "Just see the guy on the right. <laughs> That's my boy over there." So you know. Almost. Almost. That's when it dawned on me that I think I'm the father of a rock star. I'm not sure. <laughs> it was. It's like a storybook. As you know, some people can't believe your boy is playing with Wilco. Pat's just one of the, just the most uh, natural musician I think, you know, I've ever met. I've always been involved in music, I, I think, from, from day one. My family, very musical. You know, Pat's grandmother was a great musician, too. She played piano. And my grandmother was a great musician. She played piano, too. They were sisters. So we kind of grew up in that whole environment of living around a house or going to a house on Sundays or holidays where there was a lot of music going on. That's the environment that we grew up in. My dad grew up in a, in a very uh, musically uh, sort of active family, you know, and, and they, were all, they were sort of always doing shows, you know, around the house and for, the, for people in the neighborhood. It was just... I think you know show business was just kind of always part of their part of their uh, their mode of of being. So he was getting music from both sides, uh, pretty much all the time. that my, my dad, uh, Tony Sansone, was involved with uh, a festival called the Lively Arts Festival. He, he booked acts in Meridian at the, at the Temple Theater all through the 70s and, and, and 80s, and, and um, he, he was responsible for bringing a lot of legendary music, a lot, a lot of legendary acts to Meridian. We've had, we had some great shows here, and my boy spent a lot of time on the stage when that was his growing up time, and we would, you know, he would come down here with me to sound checks, and we got to see Ray Charles and, and Tony Bennett. Gladys Knight and, uh, you know, the Commodores and lots of great country acts. And all these famous uh, people on the stage, and he kind of could relate to that even as a kid. Meridian is a, is a very musical city. Tots of chimneys in the sea. I believe I've seen the finger of divine extremity. He graduated down there and he was stayed down in Hattiesburg and worked at a t shirt place. And uh, when I left Hattiesburg and moved to New Orleans in the mid 90s, John had moved. Uh, had moved from Oxford to New Orleans as well. So we both ended up in New Orleans at the same time. We had really similar tastes in terms of music that we just sort of just bonded over, over favorite records, you know. And, uh, and uh, so I started bouncing songs off of him and he, we uh, recorded the first um, Autumn Defense record at uh, Kingsway in New Orleans, a really great Daniel Lanois studio. I have heard the Warren very fast across the void. I have married broken spoke, charging smoke wheels, spit and swallowed opioids. Through through that connection and through through our through our band, um, that's how I got to know Jeff and and uh, Glenn and you know the the Wilco guys. So everyone knew him, and that was sort of the way with Wilco. It was always um, it was always not really about auditions. It was about more about who was sort of in the area and, um, you know, and just friends. It may, mainly just that was kind of the way it's always been with the band. And Jeff knew, you know, Nels Klein would, would be a good fit and, you know, try to make a kind of a super band or something to have Pat involved. And, um, and they both, um, you know, really raised the level of the musicianship in the band. Well, 
he's almost taken this, uh, he and Jeff have had this wonderful sort of rapport in the studio where Jeff is more, Jeff, you know, has more of a vision, is kind of a, more of a big picture guy, and Pat's more of a, mind, you know, small, detail-oriented guy in the studio. And he, he's sort of been, um, you know, um, with Jeff, sort of a, almost a musical director at, at different times in the band. Uh, it, it, it happened very organically. Um, it wasn't really, it wasn't really set out that I was going to be the, the co-producer of the record when we started the record. We, we started making the record in our own studio in Chicago uh, without an outside producer this time. And um, there just came a, a, a point in the process where th there, there needed to be someone sort of filling the, the, the hole uh, that, that was there because we didn't have an outside producer. You know, I think Jeff kind of trusted me in that sort of situation enough to kind of allow me to, to fill that role with this record. They're different animals, you know, the studio and the stage. I love to perform. I mean, there's, you know, I, I just the, the the feeling that you get in that conversation between yourself and the audience and and the, and the guys that you're playing with, and it can be a really th thrilling feeling, um, you know, when it's when it's going well. <laughs> you, there's kind of no no other place you you can get that. You know, we, we try to do a show that's that's uh, satisfying to the crowd and satisfying to us. And um, there's a big catalog. You know, the Wilco catalog is, is is pretty big at this point. So there's a lot of music to draw upon. I think of the temple as sort of a sacred place to me. That was the place where my dad put on all those shows in the 70s. We said, let's see if we can get Wilco. So I called the office. I kind of told him, if, if you want to, if you want to book Wilco at the temple, like you always have, you know, you, you know, good luck, you know, and, and he went through the, uh, he went through the same process that anybody would, you know, to, to, to book Wilco. He still makes fun of me about that, but that's okay. It's, uh, you know, we only were going to do one show, so we didn't have any computer, we didn't have any credit card set up, we didn't have anything. So I said, you know, well, you're going to be getting people, you know, from all over the South, maybe all over the country, you know. You know, there's going to be people from, from all over that are going to be coming to this show. If, you know, what's, you know, have you got your, you know, your credit card, um, you know, you got, do you have an online thing happening for ticket buys or credit card? And he said, oh, no, we're probably not going to do any credit cards, you know. I was like, well, you have you have to have a credit card, you know, set up for, for you know, how, how are you going to sell tickets to people all over the country? So, well, we'll probably just do like we always did, you know, if they they can send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, you know, and and the and the, you know, and the money for the tickets, and we'll we'll send send their tickets back. I was like, that is never going to work, you know, you you just can't do it. We couldn't send them to the wrong place because they address the envelope sent it back, and we sold this theater out in three or four days. Every single person that sat in that theater, he had talked to on the phone and helped them pick out their seats. I think that's the way that Tony had always uh, produced and, and done shows, you know, and it still worked for him with the Wilco show. And then next thing I know, we're, we're booked at the Temple Theater. It's my father's voice trailing off, sailor sailing off in the morning. With the air conditioning rooms at the top of the stairs. It's it's very it's a very rare and uh, unique um, opportunity to be able to play with uh, you know five other guys that get along so well and, and also are able to uh, connect so deeply musically. I feel very lucky to be able to, um, to, to do this with, with these guys. I think that he's a goodwill ambassador for our state. You know, we've had a lot of other musicians that were goodwill ambassadors too. Uh, Chris Etheridge, who, who just left us, was a goodwill ambassador for our state. I think Pat's kind of filling those shoes now, you know. I'm about as proud as a dad could be of a 
of a son who's done real well, and he's a nice person. Patrick is a nice person who happens to be a great musician. <laughs>